just what we needed. Another king. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the first installment of a lengthy walkthrough I'm going to do on um, Game of Thrones Pinball, the, the Pro Edition from Stern. Um, first things first, I'm your pal Chuck Work, streaming for uh, Straight Down the Middle Pinball. Um, I tend to stream usually Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., so make sure you check me out. Uh, so for the next handful of weeks, we're going to be doing Game of Thrones only and go through every aspect of the game and uh, hopefully kind of clear up once and for all all the confusion a lot of players have on the game and don't uh, have access to one to to really dive into the deep details, which is what we're going to do. That's why it's going to consist over multiple weeks. So um, tonight's the first part. We're going to start very, very basic and then build up. So the whole point of this and the order that I'm doing it is to start you with a base knowledge and then build off that so that each thing we advance to you're going to use what you learned before to be able to understand the next parts later and then when we get to the end actually playing the game and going through strategy and uh, trying to score big scores all this stuff you've learned up to that point should make total sense by then and uh, so hopefully the the uh, the walkthrough will be good for everyone um, and then obviously I'll, I'll save all these to YouTube each part being its own uh, own video, hopefully in the, the one to two hour range, never more than two hours. I can't imagine any of the parts taking more than two hours, but that way it's more digestible. So you can kind of concentrate if you want to learn these five things, you can just watch this video, or if you want to move to the more advanced stuff, you can just watch that video. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Ross Man, what up? SDTM, I assume it's Zach and Greg, so what's going on? Okay, so. Um, I guess we'll get going here. All right, so tonight, the five things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about playfield validation. We're going to talk about the combo and playfield multipliers on Game of Thrones. We're going to talk about the battering ram rules. Um, we're going to talk about how the spinner works. And we're also going to talk about general mode rules. We're not going to get into the specific modes and how they work. That'll be the next time. But tonight, we're just going to talk about uh, just overall general uh, things about the, uh, the modes or the battles of the game. So... Um, with that, we'll get started. So, first thing, playfield validation. Uh, just in general, playfield validation uh, can occur on any pinball machine. So what playfield validation means is the point at which the pinball machine knows that you're playing and they consider the playfield valid, meaning if you drain, you're going to get your bonus and your turn's going to be over. Typically on older machines, if you don't touch a single switch after plunging, and the ball drains, it'll get served back to you because the game thinks that you have not started playing yet and something wrong happened with the machine, so the game gives it back to you. Um, in the newer machines, uh, you'll see, with especially with this one, uh, the number of switches you can hit and drain and still get the ball back is more than zero switches. So you can really use it to your advantage when playing a game, whether it be casually or competitively. Um, 
is using that play field validation knowledge and knowing that I can drain right here and I'm going to get the ball back. Um, so it's huge, especially on a game like this, and you'll see. So typically... For play field uh, validation, like I said, older machines, you can't touch any switches. Newer machines, you can touch multiple switches, and it'll still give it back. So on Game of Thrones, I've pretty much figured out that there's two types of switches. There's major, uh, from what I like to call, there's major switches, there's minor switches. Minor switches. They're basically uh, going to be any thing that's not a rollover. So the in lanes and out lanes are rollovers. You go down those, the play field's validated. Um, the rollovers, like in the orbits or the top lanes up top, those are major switches. Your play field's going to be validated once you hit those. Uh, I've found out that most, um, uh, what do you call them? Damn it, the optos. Optos are also usually a major switch. So hitting any of those switches, the play field's immediately validated. If you can avoid those, and only hit other types of switches, the play field will let you do a certain amount of those before the play field, or the, before the game thinks that the ball is live and you start it. So Choose I'll start a game right here and I'll show you how this works. So we talked about the major switches. Those are all the ones you want to avoid. So like I said, the right orbit has a rollover lane, up, uh, a rollover switch up in the top corner up here next to the pop uppers. You don't want to hit that. So every time you plunge the ball on Game of Thrones, no matter when, whether it's the beginning of your ball, after a lock, whenever, you always, always, always want to short plunge and not touch that switch that's at the top of the right orbit. So it doesn't matter who we're picking. It doesn't matter what house we're doing. So I'm just going to choose Stark. But my whole goal here is to plunge the ball and not touch that switch in the right orbit. Winter is coming. And take your time all you want. Unless you're being served a ball after a lock, which we'll get into in a second, the game's not going to auto-fire you. So just take your time and make sure you're not hitting that switch. Okay. So right now, the play I haven't touched a single thing on the play field except for my flipper button. So I haven't touched any switches, nothing. So if I drain the ball, gives me the ball right back and you can see my my ball save hasn't gone off it hasn't even started yet so that's the key you want to understand how many things you can hit or how many things you can do before the game even starts your ball save so on to the minor switches we talked about the major switches mostly optos and rollover switches uh, the battering ram is also a major switch uh, the, the dragon kickback is also a switch that's an opto uh, a major switch that'll validate the play field now Minor switches are pop bumpers, any stand-up target, the slingshots, and the drop targets. So that's a whole bunch of stuff on the play field that you can hit, and still the game won't start your ball save, and it doesn't validate the play field. Um, now you have a certain number of those before it does validate the play field. I believe in every single case, as long as you hit three or less of those minor switches, your play field will not be validated, you can drain down the center not out the out lanes because remember those have rollovers if you drain down the out lanes you're done so if you hit three minor switches and drain down the middle you will get the ball back that's if at the start of a ball or after a ball lock and I'll show you both how they work but again we just plunged the ball we let it drain and give it right, gave it right back to us uh, we didn't start the ball save at all so this time I'm going to try and hit a couple minor switches and then drain and show you that we still haven't started the ball save and we get the ball back So there, I just hit a stand-up target, and my ball my ball save is flashing, but this is key. It has not started yet. If it had started, it would have played my ball save animation, and it would have auto-fired the ball back out. But you can see, the ball's still sitting in the shooter lane, the auto-fire is not active, So I, and I've only hit one minor switch. So when I plunge the ball again, I can hit another minor switch and not have my ball save start. That's key for two reasons. One being the drop targets, and two being the stand-ups on the right, which are your green lock targets. Because those are minor switches, you can go for those dangerous shots, which are very valuable, and not even have the ball safe start, okay? Okay, 
So this time I'm going to try and hit the drop targets and hopefully only hit one of them, maybe two. Okay, so I ricocheted off the drop targets into the stand-ups. It activated my ball save, and here comes my ball save. Now, another key to play field validation. That's one of them. After a ball save, it fires you the ball back into the shooter lane. What you want to uh, keep an eye out for is if you get a ball save or lock a ball, the auto fire is engaged on the game. So you want to beat the auto fire by manually plunging and getting it back into play without hitting that switch at the top of the game. So I do that in two ways. Before the auto fire goes, just try and plunge it real quick. Just get it away from the auto fire kicker. Um, if it's not strong enough, what I do is I push the uh, shooter rod into the game. So then the, the shooter rod is protruding out a lot more. So then when the ball comes back down and wants to hit that switch to make the auto fire go again, the ball will bounce forward, not touching that switch, and give you more time to let the ball settle and then make another plunge to get the ball back into the game without letting the auto fire kick it. Because if the auto fire hits it, it's going to push it up that right orbit and you're going to hit that, that major switch and have the play field validated. So, again, I beat the auto fire, plunged it, I have it on a flipper, the play field is not validated. So I've already lost a ball with my ball save, and any other situation, if I drained right now, my turn would be over. But it's not. Because the play field's not validated. So one key is doing it at the beginning of every ball, but the other key is remembering to do it every time the game serves you a ball into the shooter lane. After locks, after ball saves. Always do that. So, I'm after my ball save. I still haven't validated the play field. Again, I, I didn't get the ball in a trap. Just let it drain. It'll serve it right back. Try again. I know this seems boring, but um, like this can really help you in scoring higher on this game. Now, again, I hit two slingshots and a spot target. That validated the play field. So I guess once you hit three, it's validated, you're done. Because I went sling, sling, stand up, drained, then I was done. But had I only hit two of those, it still would have given me the ball back. So technically, you can light at least your first lock and get your first lock before you, your ball save even starts. Okay? So start to just get into that habit of every time you get served the ball, short plunge it, don't touch that top switch, get it onto a trap, and then concentrate on either your lock targets or your drop targets to light your Lord of Light out lanes and uh, go from there. It's always a good way to start. And and don't forget after locks as well. So I have my lock lit up the middle. So again, I got the ball save, beat the auto plunge. Because I didn't get onto a trap, I can let it serve back in and try again. Okay, now I have it on a trap. I'm going to try and lock the ball, and then I'll show you. Oh, look. Okay. So, that time, I hit the stand-up, and I hit I hit the gold stand-up, and the two lock stand-ups, and the play field wasn't validated yet. I drained, and it still gave me the ball back. So, it's not an exact science, but I'm telling you, it if it's only two minor switches, you're always going to get the ball back. So, in that case... I got the ball back anyway, even though it seems like I hit three. The slings validate, but I think they fall under the minor switch category, meaning you'd have to hit three slings in order to validate the play field. Pop bumpers are the same way, I believe. So if, if you happen to plunge it and it sneaks in and hits a pop bumper, don't freak out. The play field's not validated yet. Uh, there's other ways to tell. Uh, I believe you're... The, the sound of the game will change from a different... There's two different tones to the game, and, and I'll, I'll point that out after we drain here. But I, and I'll show you the other ways to tell if the play feels validated or not. So there's a locked ball. I'm just going to pass on Moe's to keep it simple. So I'm not sure why it served me another ball, but that's okay. We'll lock another one. Okay, remember, beat the auto plunge. See, I plunged it too short. Push forward the plunger so it bounces the ball up so you can have a, an easier settle to go and short plunge it again. 
See, I'm just holding forward, letting it bounce forward, then plunge. Okay, I didn't catch it, just let it go. Okay. So that's how you do it after a lock as well. So we'll go ahead and... Uh, And I don't know if you noticed the, the music changing, but the music changed once I validated the play field. So we'll go ahead and let this, uh, this multi ball drain out. Like multi -ball. We cannot let Stannis into these walls. <laughs> Jeff, I'm pretty sure. If you if you don't ask that question on every stream, you're now required to. So he asked about the different colored flipper rubbers. I had those because I'm a big Bengals fan, so all my games have black and orange flippers. Uh, I'll switch them throughout the year. Uh, I'll put white and blue for UK Wildcats, and I'll put uh, red and white for Reds when it's baseball season. Okay. So we were talking about before other ways to tell if the playfield's been validated. Another way to tell is the music. So pay attention to how the music sounds right now. Okay? The cadence of the music will change um, when you've validated the play field. So I'm going to see if... I'm trying to think of the easiest way. Here's what I'll do. I'll short plunge, trap it, and I'll hit the battering ram because that immediately validates the play field. Just listen for how the music changes. Let it go because I couldn't trap it. Hear how the music changed? It like went to a different verse or or whatever you want to call it, a different. So you can look. You can, like what I did when I was first getting started on getting used to the playfield validation was I always listened. I listened for that change in the music because I wasn't sure how many switches or what switches I could hit at first before it became validated. So I always listened for that music change. But that's not always going to be available to you if you're in some loud bar trying to play and you can't hear a damn thing. So always remember the minor and major switches and which ones you can hit, which ones you can't. Anytime the ball served in the in the end of the shooter lane, that's a, a point in time when you can take advantage of play field validation. So never forget that. So the, t the thing is, it won't die. I was walking down the street. That's how you sing it the whole time. So, wow. Okay. It's a really yep. big song. Yeah. <laughs> One game at a time. Alright, so any questions on playfield validation, go ahead and throw it into the chat. But that's essentially it. Just always remember if the game's serving you the ball in the shooter lane, you better be on, on, the, on the trigger to either beat the auto plunge or to take your time and uh, soft plunge and get that and take advantage of those play field validation rules. It will increase your scores immensely. It's insane how much it helps. Um, I've had plenty of times where like, I'm in such a good habit of short plunging um, at, at all times that I've thought that I've drained the ball and lost my ball and walked away. But because the game wasn't validated, it served my ball back out and people are calling me back over in a competitive match saying, hey, you're still up. So. Just get into that habit, and even if you don't remember, you'll be pleasantly surprised. So just just keep that in your mind and get into that habit of always short plunging. <laughs> okay, so that's it for playfield validation. We'll move on to the uh, combo and playfield multipliers. Um, so there, uh, for combo and playfield multipliers, this game has two types of multipliers. There's combo multipliers, which are the red arrows that you see above all the shields. See those flashing? Those indicate a shot that is multiplied by at least 2x if that red arrow is flashing. And then there's playfield multipliers. We'll get into the, the rules behind them in the next step, but those are initiated by the battering ram. And when you have those going, those get multiplied against the combo multipliers to make a mixed multiplied shot so anytime you have a red arrow flashing 
on a mode shot, a jackpot. You want to aim for those as opposed to one a mode shot that's that doesn't have a combo multiplier shot there. Because again, if that red arrow is flashing on a shot, you know it's worth at least two times. I'll explain to you how you know exactly how much each one's multiplied here in a second, but we just kind of want to go over the basics here for at first. So, uh, combo multipliers of the red arrows. Um, we'll go ahead and start another game. And I'll, uh, I'll do my best to show how these work. So whenever you hit a shot, it will start red arrows flashing on other shots except for the one you just hit. To tell, you can see right now, look at the DMD. It says 1x, 2x, 2x, 1x, 1x. That means from left to right, it's telling you every shot and what it's multiplied by. It said 1x, which means the left orbit is multiplied by 1. The dragon was a 2x and then another 2x for the center ramp so if you remember the two shots that were flashing red the red arrows above the shields were the dragon shot and the center ramp so the game was telling you these two shots are worth 2x and then the next shot over which was 1x was the right ramp and the final shot all the way to the right the right orbit that was another 1x so anytime you're playing the game when you hit a shot it will tell you if you're looking at the standard screen, so look up there again, it's telling me. So, 1x, 3x, 3x, 1x, 1x. It's telling you what all those shots are multiplied at all times. Now, obviously, you can't be looking up at the DMD at all times, but it's there for you if you need it. So remember, the red arrows are going to be more than 1x. The center ramp does not have a red arrow on it, so it's only 1x. So, that's the basics of combo multipliers. Now, first step in combo multipliers is when you hit a shot, that shot will never ever be lit. So you can't just keep hitting a shot and have it keep increasing in multiplier, unless... And we'll get into that later. If there's certain circumstances, you can do that. But in a regular game, playing as House Stark, whatever, um, if you hit a shot, that shot does not increase in value. Other shots do. And depending on which shot you hit will depend on what other shots are lit. So we saw before, I hit the left orbit, and it made the dragon shot and the center shot worth more. So we know that the left orbit will increase the dragon shot and the center shot. Now if I were to hit the left orbit again, that shot's not multiplied by anything and it's not going to do anything but restart the combo multiplier timer for the dragon and the center shot. I'm pretty sure that it's not going to just keep increasing that. So if you hit the left orbit twice in a row, it's not going to make the dragon shot and the center shot worth three times now, if that makes sense. In order to keep increasing the multipliers, you have to hit those flashing red arrows. So I'll try and show you right here. So I hit the center shot. It lit every other shot but the center shot. So we'll beat our auto plunge here so we can see these. Another huge thing about playfield validation, this is why we're going in this order. The playfield is not validated. These combo multiplier arrows will never time out. As long as I want to sit here and hold this ball, these combo multiplier timers will stay frozen. So if you can somehow set up a big shot, like a big hurry up or a big uh, shot after a locked ball or a ball save with these multipliers, you can short plunge, catch it, line up that shot, take your time, and boom, cash in. You don't have to rush. You don't have to hurry. It's, it's, it's awesome. So again, we hit the center shot, which made the arrows start flashing on all other shots for 2x. So no matter which one I hit, it's going to be worth double what it normally is. So I hit right ramp. So now all the red, well, we'll try and get it back here. So I gotta cut this screen here. Okay, so the dragon and the center ramp should be worth three a piece. I just hit the dragon, which made all the shots light. So you can see they're all three X now, but if I wait too long, boom. When the arrows go out, they all go back to one X. So, just remember, if you want to keep increasing those combo multipliers, the game is telling you, okay, you hit this shot, now we want you to hit these other shots, because they're worth more now, 
And if you can keep that consistent comboing going, it just goes up and up and up. Now, there's a limit when you start the game to the amount of uh, multiplication you can give to a, uh, a comboed shot. So a shot that has a flashing red arrow on it, it's limited to 3x only when you start the game. It can go up to a maximum of 5x. Even further than that, it can go to 6x, but we'll get that, la uh, get that later. But in general, the combo multipliers are limited to 5x. But when you start the game, you can only get to 3. No matter how many combo shots you make, you're not going to get past 3x. To advance that, you have to defeat the modes. So right now, I have Stark Mode and Greyjoy lit. And we'll get into the modes later, but I just want to show you something. So Stark's pretty easy to finish. Let's see if I can't do this real quick. Um, but anyway, uh, when you complete a mode, So I completed the start mode. Now, if you look on the right ramp, there's an insert, a yellow insert, that says swords on it. Every time you complete a mode, it will light that insert. If you collect that shot, so if you hit the right ramp, you'll collect a sword, and now you've unlocked the next level of multipliers. This applies to combo and play field. So when you start a game, your combo shots can only be 3x, your play field can only be 3x. So if you remember, when those two are running together, they're multiplied. So if you have a 3x comboed shot combined with a 3x playfield multiplier, that's a 9x mixed shot. And that applies to all the ones that have the red arrows. Every other shot in the game is only multiplied by the playfield multiplier. Okay? So if you hit a red flashing arrow while playfield multipliers are going, you're going to get that comboed multiplier multiplied by the playfield multiplier. Hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, so if I light, if I get the sword, it doesn't tell you that you've unlocked uh, more multipliers, but it has. So, if anybody's like me when I first started playing this, I had no idea what those swords did besides points. So I'm going to pass on the mode just so I can see if I can show you. Okay, everything's on 3x. So if you look, now look, so the dragon shot and the center shot were worth 4x until my timer ran out. So that's how you unlock them. You beat a mode, you unlock the next level. So the highest level is 5x, right? So once you beat two modes, you're at the highest level of multipliers unlocked. Thanks for the bits, uh, Mr. Rossman. Um, hopefully uh, the bit thing is working. I just learned how that works tonight, so... I see the cup there, but who knows? <laughs> but anyway, so those are combo multipliers. Hopefully that makes sense. So if I were to complete another mode, I unlock 5x for both combo and play field. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, so remember, keep concentrating on where those flashing arrows are at. And if you got a big, if you got multiple flashing shots, jackpots, mode shots. Avoid the ones that don't have the red arrows and shoot for the ones that do have the red arrows. This is another way that, like, you'll just... If you've ever played this game and wondered, well, I just had a very similar game to, th than I did before. Why is my score so much lower than it was before? Because before, I can almost guarantee you, you, were, you had a smooth game where you were comboing all those shots together. And hitting those red flashing arrows and, and maybe didn't realize it, but that's what was happening. So, just concentrate on hitting those red flashing arrows, especially if you know there's something, if there's multiple valuable things to go for, always go for the red flashing arrows. 
Um, so play fuel multipliers are go hand in hand with the battering ram, which is going to be our next piece that we talk about. So I'm just going to go into those, and then you can kind of see how those get combined with the the um, the combo uh, the shot multipliers, the combo multipliers. So for the battering ram. That's your shot right here, in between the center ramp and the right ramp. This is another extremely dangerous slash valuable part of the game. Hitting this battering ram will start your play field multipliers. Um, so, the way the battering ram's behavior works. You hit the battering ram once, you'll see a blue arrow starts flashing in front of the battering ram. The game is telling you, you have not advanced to the next level of the battering ram yet, but you've initiated it, you've started, you're on your way. If you let that blue arrow flat, like time out, see how it's getting faster and faster and faster? It goes out. You'll never ever start a play field multiplier if you keep letting that blue arrow time out. It's not going to let you advance until you hit it while the blue arrow is flashing. Hopefully that makes sense. So we'll show it right here. So blue arrow's flashing, I want to try and hit it again. Um, so we'll start a new game and I'll, I'll show you here in a second. Alright. So new game. So we want to get that blue arrow flashing. And, I, and I'm going to try and incorporate every single skill we're learning along the way as we're learning together. So everyone by this point should have no questions on why I keep letting the ball drain right now. Okay. So you can see why that battering ram is so dangerous. But remember, don't validate the play field. Okay, blue arrow is flashing if I hit it again. Now another light lights up. That light is in the very front here. It's orange and it says play field multiplier on it. That just means that you've locked in the first half of where you need to go to actually start the play field being multiplied. So now you can take your time. Because the blue arrow isn't flashing, you're not gonna lose any ground. You're halfway there, you can do some other things. Um, but the next step is to hit the battering ram again. So we've hit it twice, we're gonna hit it a third time. Okay, blue arrow's flashing again, now play field multiplier's flashing again. That means if you can hit it while all that's still flashing, your play field multiplier will start. Boom. Careful, careful. So now you can see those lights went out, but now we got 2x play field flashing down here by my left flipper. That's how you start play field multipliers. And again, they get multiplied with the comboed red arrows. So now when we now look at the the arrows up top or the uh, the DMD. 4x, 4x, 2x. That's because we have the 2x play field multiplied with the um, with the combo. See how they all say 4x now? So if you remember, before we couldn't get past a 3x multiplied shot on the combo multipliers because we're limited. We hadn't completed any modes yet. We haven't completed any modes on this game, but because we had 2x play field running and a 2x shot multiplier, which we're not to 3x yet, they multiply them together. So now that that individual shot with the red arrow flashing is now worth 4x instead of 2x. So you can kind of see where I'm going there. So had we advanced. Um, the play field multiplier again to 3x and then kept shooting our combo shots we could get up to 9x on a single shot that had a flashing arrow and that's just before completing one mode that's where we're limited to now if you think about it we complete a mode we've unlocked 4x for both uh play field and shot multipliers so that means we can get up to 4x on a shot multiplier and 4x on play field so four times four 16x is the uh, most one individual shot with a red flashing arrow can be. Complete a second mode. Now we've unlocked 5x for the battering ram and the shot multipliers, the combo multipliers. I keep 
saying this, but shot and combo are the same thing. So combo multipliers are maxed out at 5x, and so is the play field of 5x. So if you think about it, a red flashing arrow, any of those shots that have a red flashing arrow on it, if you have 5x play field running and you've hit a bunch of combo shots, you can have one shot worth 25 times what it normally is. So if you think about it, some of the scoring in this game, some of the jackpots are pretty big. Um, it's kind of hard to like think of one individual shot, but obviously jackpots and multi-ball. You're, um, you're typically getting around, I don't know, one, maybe two million from those jackpots. Now you're getting 25, 30 million, 25, 50 million. So it, it can be huge. Now it's very difficult to get to that point, especially because this game is notorious for having battering rams that have trouble, you know, it feels like you're hitting a brick wall, so it's hard to advance those play field multipliers, but it's good to keep in your head. Um, always remember that if that play field multiplier light is flashing in front of the battering ram, you want to go ahead and try and hit that again, because then you're going to start your play field multiplier, and I'll show you if I can get it going here. Oh, come on. I'll get. Oh, 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 oh. So, what I'm going to try and do next, I'm going to show you the most important piece of the play field multiplier rules. So, again, we got to start from scratch. Nothing's lit. So, we got to hit that battering ram four times, assuming we don't let the blue arrow time out. So, now. Now we can rest if we want to because um, we've got the playfield multiplier lit. So now we know we only need to hit the battering ram twice to start 2x. So there's one. Oh. Okay. So 2x is running. A very crucial thing about this game. The way the multiplier, the playfield multiplier works with the battering ram. The rules are, I believe, that... Now that we have 2x running, obviously if we, if we hit the battering ram four more times, we're going to get to 3x. But what's supposed to happen is the ti you're every time you hit the battering ram, the timer will extend. But it's a very minimal extension. What I have found out through talking with other owners and players of the game is, and I lost that 2x, so we'll try and do it again here. Um, is that you can extend the play field multipliers for an extremely long period of time and the way to do that is wait I know it sounds weird but waiting for the multipliers to time out so if you're trapped up and you can see that the play field multipliers are flashing real fast that means it's about to go out and you're about to lose them so you can see it's getting faster and faster and faster I'm going to wait for it to go out. You have a grace period between when the play field multiplier stops flashing and when you can hit the battering ram and have them all come back and start with an entirely full timing. So if you noticed on that, my 2x was gone, but I hit the battering ram within a second or so and it brought it back and it was flashing real slow again. So don't rush to hit the battering ram when you see those play field multipliers flashing real quickly. Yeah, they're about to go out, but it's better to trap up, wait for them to actually go out, then hit the battering ram. Because let's say you're at 4x or 3x, it will completely bring all three of those back, start the timer over, and they're flashing real slow again. I think the stand, like the depending on which level you're at, so 2x has the longest timer, 3x has a shorter timer, 4x has an even shorter timer, so let's say the 4x, if you're at 4x, the timer's 10 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever it is. If you wait for those all to go out and then hit the battering ram within a second or two, it brings it all back and starts your timer over again. If you're just smashing on the battering ram while they're still flashing, you're only going to get maybe a second or two extra onto your timer. But if you wait for them to go out and then hit it, you're going to get your full timer back, so 10, 15 seconds. The key to this is, though, if you've unlocked 5x and you reach 5x, there is no possible way to ever bring 
the multipliers back with a full timer. I don't know if you keep bashing on the battering ram if it gives you another second or two. I'm not sure of that, but I'm pretty confident that once you reach 5x play field, there's nothing extending the timer. It's got its timer, and when it's over, it's over. So the key is, I know this sounds weird, but don't get to 5x. You can theoretically play an entire game while keeping 2, 3x running the entire game. So in my opinion, it's better to have the entire play field multiplied for the majority of a game than get to 5x for a really short period of time. Because if you think about it, if you're letting the lights of the playfield multipliers go out and then spending one hit to the battering ram to restart those timers, you're advancing to the next playfield multiplier very, very slowly. But again, once you get to 5x, there's no way to extend it. It's going to have its timer. When it's out, it's out. you got to restart from scratch. So that's the most important thing about playfield multipliers on this game with the battering ram. If they're about to run out, trap up, wait for them to run out. Once they're out, hit the battering ram again, they'll restart with a full timer. The ram, uh, so Ace asked if the ram is safer to hit from the left flipper. It's, again, it's game to game. I've played games where, like, the, the ram doesn't even register if you try from the left flipper. Mm -hmm. So, rule of thumb, always try and go at it with a backhand from the right. It's a very easy, repeatable shot. Again, you might need to spend some time getting used to saving the ball after hitting the ram, but on my on my game, you can hit it from either flipper. Now, some players might be more consistent from the left on mine, especially getting it to kind of hit off the ram, then the, the outer wall, then come back to a nice trap, but I'm not very consistent at that at all. So, I tend to lean more towards the backhand, but you can obviously do both. And it's, it's going to be game by game and player by player preference. So. so, I'm going to get the ball back on a trap here, and then I'll see if there's any more questions. Um, so, during multi-ball, do you go for the battering ram with ball save? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a good thing to get going. Um... What I would do, well, what I would say is, if your battering ram is flashing, make sure you hit it. Because again, if the lights are lit solid in front of the battering ram, you're not going to lose that progress. So at least if it's flashing at the start of multi-ball, hit it to at least get to that next level, closer to another play field multiplier and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always good to, while you know you're not going to lose the ball, whoop, I plunged too far, so now if I lose the ball, I'm dead. The music changed, reminder. Okay. So start a multi-ball, yeah, it's always great to go after the um, the battering ring. Uh, that'll get your, obviously get your play field multipliers going, and the quicker you can be in those, or further along, the better. Um, but the other piece to the battering ram rules are is wildfire, which I have lit right now. So we'll kind of use the recording of this video to kind of show people how I got here. But anyway... You light wildfire from after you light your lock for multi-ball. So what I did was is I had lock lit up the middle, and then I hit the green targets again. They have two purposes. One, they light the lock, and if a lock's already lit, they light wildfire at the battery ramp. So what I did was while that lock was lit up the center ramp, I hit the green targets again, and it lit wildfire at the battery ramp. Wildfire is a mode that works similarly to the flashing blue arrow. So when I hit the battering ram now, because wildfire's lit, that's the green light in front of the play field multiplier. So wildfire's lit. I've started that mode. And during this mode, every hit to the battering ram will increase the base value of my um, jackpots in the Blackwater multi deck. So every hit to it increases. I'm going to hit it more than once for crying out loud. Well, see, it already went out. So every time you hit that flashing green wildfire shot on the battering ram. Um, so again, look at our multiply shots here. Now they're back down to two. 
and they're at two because the play field multiplier is running. So even though I don't have any, so I'm waiting for it to time out. Let's see how it's about to go out. Boom. Full timer. Okay, so even though I don't have any combo multipliers going, my shots are still worth double. And I just fifth that. So I collected a sword. So now I got more multipliers available. So instead of 3x, I can go 4x. I want to get back to a flipper. Oh. Okay. So that's wildfire. It's, it's not something you want to go for purposefully, but if it's running, just know that it's increasing the value, the base value of your jackpots in Blackwater Multiball. Uh, so Scotty asked about the iron bank value and using the comboed shots. Uh, I believe, yes, they do affect the iron bank, which is your lockdown bar collect. At the, uh, You only want to use it at the end of a ball. If you have House Martell, that's an antiball during multiball, but we'll get into that. Anyway, the Iron Bank is a, like basically a collection of points that you accumulate every time, I believe, you hit a comboed shot. So anytime you hit a, uh, a red arrow flashing on the game, it increases the value of that Iron Bank you get when you hit the lockdown bar as you're draining. The reason why you never want to hit the lockdown bar for the Iron Bank while you're playing in the game, what it does is, is it collects all those points you've accumulated from combos, but it also resets all your multipliers. So if you have 5x play field running and 5x combo multipliers, which means all those combo shots are worth 25 times a piece, do not hit that lock bar button. Cause it, yeah, you might have a fairly large iron bank at 10, 15 million maybe, if it's like the highest I've ever seen it. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna erase all those multipliers. So if you're in the middle of a multi-ball, get rid of all those multipliers, you're missing out on hundreds of millions, up to a billion points by collecting this little pittance of an iron bank. So don't hit the lockdown bar unless you're House Martell or Azure Drain, because then you'll just collect those little bit of points and, and whatever, and you'll move on. So, oh yeah, thanks for the host quickie. I didn't notice that. Appreciate it, man. Okay. Um... So uh, again, back to Wildfire, that, the one key piece to Wildfire, addition, additionally to um, it increasing the value of your jackpots in multiball, has one more, much more important aspect. If you have Wildfire lit, it advances your play field. Wildfire being lit and running as w along with your battering ram hits, it will advance your playfield multipliers quicker. So, and I believe it's one less shot. So instead of it taking three shots, or sorry, four shots, it takes three. So right now, if I hit the battering ram twice, my playfield multiplier will start. Oh, come on. Okay. The wildfire's still running. It's one, it's two. That's two shots. Maybe it is still four. I can't remember when that's the case. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So I only hit the battering ram three times that time to get to three X. So watch. One. Two. Three. I only hit the battering ram three times and I got to the next multiplier. Normally it takes four. That's the important thing about, uh, so we had a question before about hitting the batting ram at the beginning of multiball. Yes, especially if wildfire is lit. But I don't think it'll be lit once you start multiball because again, that feeds into the value of your um, jackpots in multiball. So I think it might go out, so scratch that. But in normal play, if wildfire is running and your play field multiplier light is lit, get after it because you only need three now instead of four. It's dangerous to hit the batting ram, but it's less dangerous if you only have to hit it three times instead of four. So just keep that in your head that that, that that those running together will get to your next multiplier level quicker. Okay. Let me check my notes here. All right. So that's it for battering ram rules. Um, any questions, fire them at me and I'll get to them. But we're going to move on to the spinner for now. So... 
One of the most important things of this game that, again, you, it's not something you're going to overtly go for, but it's something like playfield validation that you need to keep awareness of in your head at all times. And, and, and knowing the spinner rules backwards and forwards will be huge, especially when you're coming out of multi-balls and wizard modes, and sometimes even before being in a wizard mode, but we'll get into that. Um, knowing how those rules work and what to look for can add to some big paydays and sometimes some really easy paydays, okay? So the spinner. The spinner is over the left orbit. Oh, the third insert on the ram. Thanks for the question. So the third insert on the ram, the one closest to the blue light, that is your super jackpot. So when you're in multi-balls, uh, the Hand of the King wizard mode has a super jackpot there. Various modes, multi-ball modes, will have a super jackpot feature that will be at the battering ram. When that's lit and you hit the battering ram, you collect the super jackpot. So that's what that is. Outside of those multi-balls, that'll never light. You can hit the mystery shot and have it light your super jackpot just as a, a free award. But outside of that, it's it's really just used in multi-balls. And it's like when you collect the other jackpots or do the other things, it'll light the battering ram for the super jackpot. Thank you for the question. I forgot about that. Okay. So, spinner. Left orbit. It's hanging over the left orbit. It's right there. Right there. Okay. There, um, the spinner. If we hit it right now. Get out of there. Keep an eye on the DMD. If I can hit it. Nope. Nope. Oh boy. My best shot at the spinner is a backhand. So the easiest way to rip this spinner is from a backhand right here. So keep it on the DMD to it'll show you how my, how many points are accumulating from hitting this spinner. Well, it should. <laughs> We'll start this next game as Grey Joy, so it won't have those animations. But I'll show you here in a second. Oh yeah, the um, the super jackpot animation and call out on this game during Blackwater Multi Ball. Outside of Terminator 2, getting a super jackpot on that, it's my favorite super jackpot to collect ever. And hitting them over and over and over again. It just starts that, that animation over again. Like if you interrupt it, it starts over like chunk, 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 chunk. I love it. It's awesome. And that and then the uh, the hound calling calling out the super jackpot's amazing. Okay. We hit a slingshot. I don't care. My ball save hasn't even started. Another way to tell you haven't validated the play field. If you look up top, my skill shot's still flashing. Play field will not be validated. If it was, that skill shot light would have gone out. Okay, so we're going to try to hit the spinner. Well, a lot of stuff going on with that. But anyway, I'll try and catch an animation for it. But basically, what I'm trying to explain is... The spinner, there it goes. So you can see 2K a spin. We're getting 2,000 a spin right now. You're going to say, who gives a shit? Why do I care? Well, you care because although it's worth 2,000 right now, if you notice on a game, if you're playing it, above the drop targets, it says increase spinner value. So each time you hit down three drop targets, oh, that was real bad. I was looking at the screen instead of the game. Okay. So we'll try and hit down some drop targets and hit the spinner instead. Nobody said the drop targets were the easiest shot in the game. There's one. Um, there's two more. Okay. So we hit down a set of drop targets. Now watch the spinner value. 
Now they're worth two times as much. Four thousand is spent. So you can see they've increased now that we've hit it. You're like, so what? Four thousand is spent. This game you get in the billions. Who cares? Okay. Well, if you hit these drop targets down enough, it starts to exponentially get higher. Now I'm a crazy nerd, and with some help from other Game of Thrones nerds, I've essentially broke it down to what you need to do to get that spinner up to values that start to mean some serious payday. Uh, let's see. If you hit down the drop target sets eight times, now a key thing to remember, you have to do this during uh, the same ball. When you drain the ball, the, the spinner um, almost drops back down to its base value. It doesn't quite get there and it's pointless to try and figure that out. But anyway, it goes back down to almost a, like a minuscule level that you started at before you started the ball. So. Eight sets of drop targets. The spinner's now worth a million a spin. So if you got a nice juice spinner like mine, you know, that you might get, you know, 30 spins, that's 30 million a shot now. So you can kind of see where I'm going here. Add in some multipliers, now we're getting crazy. Um, 11 sets. So it took us eight to get to a million a spin, but only three more to get to two million a spin. So just over 2 million a spin if you've hit down 11 set of drop targets. I know that sounds like a lot, but remember, you got multi balls to play with. That's another thing you can use your ball save for. Hit down the drop target sets. If you get, like, with all those balls flying around, you'll go through 5, 6 sets of drop targets before you even realize it. So, um, it's key to remember, like, I'm not telling you to keep counting your head for the, the drop target sets that you've hit, but if you're trapped up, and you're in your, uh, whatever the hell this is called. Boom, spinner, level two, 4,000 to spin. So if you feel like you had a long ass multi ball and you hit that in the drop target sets a bunch, go into your instant info and see where they're at, okay? Um, so 11 sets for 2.1 million to spin. Then if you go three more sets to 14 sets, now you're at 3.2 million to spin. So I think if you saw my instant info, said I was at a certain level of spinner. Level 2 spinner, okay? So as you advance, it's not with every drop target set, but as you advance the, the, the spinner value, it goes up levels. Once it gets to the fourth level, that's the highest level. But that doesn't mean you're capped at points. If you keep, I think you get to level 4 by hitting maybe down maybe 8 sets. Probably 6, I don't know. But my point is, is even if you're at the highest level, which is level four, we're at level two right now, the value of the spinner will keep increasing. Now, once you get to 14 sets and you're in the three million range, the amount of increases which each, with each set is severely reduced. So if you can get to that one to three million range of spin, um, that's where you want to be. And the key to remember too, if you have a nice game that uh, the audio is nice and loud on it, you can listen for it. You can tell the spinner has a, a sound to it. Um, as you increase the spinner level, the sound of that spinner changes. So just like validating the play field, you can get used to what that spinner sounds like when you're at a different level, meaning it's a more valuable spinner. So now that I drained, I'm back down to level one. So what we'll try to do here is we'll try and advance that spinner level as high as we can. So I'm going to get into multi-ball and see how much we can get that. I'm going to let this one drain and I'm going to get Martell so we can have that added ball to make our multi-ball longer. So, but again, each drop target set, even if you don't advance the spinner level, it's increasing every time. The value of that spinner is increasing every time you hit a drop target set. Uh, so remember, 8, 11, 14. Each time you hit one of those, it's going up big time. Now, Choose your house. House motto. the way the multipliers work with the spinner, since the spinner is a switch that's elevated above the play field, that does not count for a combo multiplied shot. So even if you have the red arrow flashing on the left orbit, it will not multiply the spinner. So that means you're limited to play field multipliers only. But if you jack up your playfield multiplier to 5x and you're at level 4 spinner and you're getting, you know, 2 to 3 million a spin, just do the math. Instead of 
two million a spin, you're getting ten million a spin. So you're getting hundreds of millions from one spinner rip. So when you come out of multi pull and you're all bummed out, like man, I had all these multipliers going, and now I'm out of multi ball. Hit that spinner and listen for the different sounds of what level you're at, or watch the screen. If there's not if there's not a whole lot going on, it'll tell you how much you're racking up a spin. And if you if you get a huge payday from one hit, just keep going until your multipliers are out. And in between those hits, remember let your lights go out. Hit the hit the battering ram again to restart your timers. Then start ripping the spinner again. You're getting 100, 200, sometimes 300 million a spin if you have full playfield multipliers going. But again, you don't want to get all the way to five because then you're just, you, that's the only amount of time you get. If there's no restarting it, it'll go back to zero eventually. But even if you're at a multi ball, if you're at a multi ball and you got all kinds of play field multipliers going, always check on the spinner. Just, you don't need to trap up and look at your info. Just get a nice good rip on it and you can listen for the sound knowing how high you are and you'll know. And if you can see the animation, you'll know as well. Okay. So we're gonna get into multi-ball here and see if we can't get that spinner value up pretty high. The uh, way I like to hit the lock target sometimes is off of the drop targets. The other rule to the drop targets is lighting your Lord of Light out lanes, which I just did. That means if I drain out these out lanes, it's gonna serve me the ball back. Going down one out lane that's lit will erase both of them. So you and so once you use one, they're both out. And standard settings are there's only one time you can use that per game. You can change in the settings to every three bank drop targets after that, but standard settings are you hit the drop targets down once, your out lane's light. That's it. So locks lit. We're just gonna get into multi ball real quick and see if I can't hit those drop targets a bunch. Preferably on one ball. Because again, the game resets your spinner value once you drain. Okay, so. so again, we're just trying to get into multi-ball. I've only hit one drop target set down, so it's not the end of the world if I drain right now. But we want to keep that, that, that chain going. Don't kill me. <laughs> okay. So our spinner is going to go back to base value. But again, we only hit the drops down once. So it's not a huge deal. So we're going to get in the multi ball right here and just immediately go after drop targets. If the ball's on the left flipper, you can hit off the lock targets. They'll cream over and hit it. But during the multi ball craziness, we're going to hit down as many drops as we can. Always stack your modes before going into multi wall, but again, we'll get into that way later. But I'm just doing this to show you see how having it that spinner value up. Drop targets, that's all I'm looking for. Also, be careful, depending on what mode you're in, the drop targets will immediately reset after hitting one. You do not want to be in those modes if you are purposely going after an increased spinner value. So if you're in Baratheon, if you're in Targaryen, I believe, the drop targets will immediately reset after hitting one, meaning you can't complete a set, meaning you can't advance the spinner value. So keep that in mind too. There's another set down. Okay, we're still going after drop targets. There's one. Add a ball. another one there's one there's 
another one. There's another one. Okay, multi balls over. So let's assume we had a ton of multipliers going. So the the spinner is a little bit higher uh, pitched. It's not a huge sound difference, but it's definitely a sound difference. Let's check on our level. Okay, so look, when we were at level two, we were only at 4,000 a spin. Now we're at 30,000 a spin. I believe if I hit down maybe one more set, it'll go to level four. But the key is getting to that first threshold, damn it, of eight sets. So we probably hit down five or six sets there. So a couple more, and we would have been to over a million a spin. That's, that's cash money right there. So we'll, uh, just for fun, we'll try one more game of Martell to see if we can get that, that spinner value up to over a million. But again, don't specifically go for the drop targets, but just kind of keep in the back of your mind, you know, if I get out of a big multi-ball and I got a bunch of multipliers going, more than likely you've upped that spinner value quite a bit. Or if you've been in multiple multi-balls during the game, chances are, like, you got a pretty jacked up spinner value. So combo that with playfield multipliers and it's awesome. So game seems sort of deep. Yeah, so the game gets as... The game's rules aren't especially deep. There's not, like, all these areas to go. But there's a million different ways you can play each of those areas of this game, if that makes sense. So, and we'll get into that later, but you'll see, like, there's a million different ways to tackle this game. And I'm, I, I want to make believers out there that you don't need to choose Martell every single time for the best scores. I promise you that's not the only way. Especially if you're a player like me who's terrible at multi-ball. There's ways around that. <clears throat> I plunged too hard, now my ball safe started. That's okay. Lock is lit. Okay. What I like to do sometimes, if I have my safety net of the outlanes being lit like I do right now, I just continue to go after drop targets because the only way I can drain is down the middle and on this game it's usually pretty easy to save it down the middle. But watch me drain right here. <laughs> okay, another set. On my way to another set. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Oh, I almost lost it. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and lock the ball. The reason why I'm doing this is I was getting kind of squirrely with the ball there. I want to get my play field validation back. Meaning if I beat the auto plunger here, get the ball into play, but don't drain. Remember, I got my play field validation. Let's say I don't like it being on this flipper. Just drain and get it back to your flip or get it back to your plunger. Okay. So Drop targets. Okay, that's another set. Lighter locks. Lock is lit. Lock another ball. Ball two locked. Yep, I got pin stadiums on here, and I have them hooked up so they never turn off. It just helps with the stream, and I have them. I have them turned down quite a bit, but as you can see, they just help immensely on the stream for keeping the lighting consistent. Okay, beat the auto plunge. And we want to keep getting drop targets. Also want a lighter. Oh, I forgot. Okay. 
So we kind of wasted that opportunity there because we lost our Lord of Light out lanes. We lost our progress on the spinner. That's all right. We'll, uh, during our ball save here, we'll try and get a couple sets down, and then we'll see what we can do in multi-ball. I think you guys get the gist, and it's just mainly to get like your head wrapped around all the different aspects of how the spinner works. Dang. Um, yeah, we'll get in the multi-ball here and... Hopefully we'll get in the multi-ball. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they kind of make the ramps look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> the uh, the Penn Stadium lights. Okay. So Baratheon, that's one of the modes we don't want to take in the multi-ball. Because remember, if we're in Baratheon, the drop target's reset right away. So... Don't pick that if you're purposely trying to go after spin. There we go. Another set. Give me, give me some more. see what our spinner level is here. Spinner level two. But again, it's more important to know what your value is per spin. As you can see, we're only at spinner level two but the spinner's more valuable than when we were at spinner level three, the other ball. That's because, if you remember, even though the value of the spinner resets quite a bit after you lose the ball, it doesn't reset all the way. So it does climb, the value climbs a little bit higher. But again, it's not anything substantial. So you really want to do it all in one ball. Let's lock another ball here. Just to get our play to a validation back. Trying to hit that that drop target. There we go. See if it'll... I wish it had an increased spinner value as a mystery award. I wonder if it does. I rarely hit the ball in the mystery so I'm not really sure but I've never seen it so I don't think it does oh baby okay now let's see what our spinner value is oh wow you can backhand the, the martel the right orbit from the right flipper you definitely can't do it from a trap on mine if it's rolling up the flipper a little bit then you can but not Not any other way. But again, you know, like you said, all games play different. So, look, we're still on spinner level two, but we're at 111,000 a spin. So let's see what just one spinner rip does for us here. I'm not sure what my score was before that. So 72 million.
So now we're at 82 million. I didn't get all that from hitting the spinner, but you can see what I'm talking about here. Oh, I got my Lord of Light. So about 6 million a spin we're getting here. Let's lock another ball. Another thing to remember, my winner is coming, will not, the hurry up will not count down because the play field is not validated. This is one of my favorite things to set up. You have a winner is coming, hurry up, and we'll talk about this more later, but how we talked about before, hurry up won't count down, nor will the combo multipliers. Do not hit the center ramp, it's not multiplied. That's bad. Hit a shot first, then into it. Kind of like Star Trek and getting double your value for destroying the vengeance. Hit the right ramp, then hit it. Bill. So that was times by three instead of one, so I got triple the value. More drop targets. There we go. Oh no! Uh, I was gonna check and see what our value was. I bet it was at least a few a few hundred thousand at that point. So that's your spinner rules. Hopefully. That helps you guys again. It's another thing to keep in the back of your mind. That's why tonight, our first run at this walkthrough, what we're doing is we're building that base of knowledge so that everything you learn tonight, you should be applying with every single thing we go through for the rest of the game. When you're playing your modes, you should be thinking about all this stuff. When you're playing your multi balls, you should be thinking about all this stuff. So that's where the complexity of the game gets in there. A lot of people get bogged down with it, but I hope breaking the game down in these segments like this can really help people like concentrate on okay now that I understand these things fully let me apply it to my gameplay and the, and the best part about it is you might never go for spinners you might hate hitting that spinner shot you might hate hitting those drop targets that's fine you don't you don't need to do that you can go a different path work on your your um, your play field multipliers and your shot multipliers and make sure you're comboing your 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 mode shots together and your um, your jackpots and multi ball so that's the key to this game. There's so many different ways to attack it that you can really still have a very advantageful game on this, even if you have a lot of weaknesses, like me. I'm terrible at shot making, so I'm always trying to hit things from a backhand, or um, I'm trying to find ways to score outside of multiball because I'm a very bad multiball player. Um, games like this allow me to find my own way in terms of consistently scoring higher. Whereas, you know, some guys might truthfully get the best out of this game by using the Martell at a ball at all times. But since I'm so bad at multi-ball, my multi balls over just as quickly if I have an at a ball and if I don't. So I might as well put my efforts toward a different ability to help me through the game and do things that I'm really good at. But we'll get into all that later. But so the last thing I want to talk about tonight was how the, Choose your the modes work. So we're not going to talk about specific modes and how to beat them, what the rules are within the modes. I'm going to talk about the theory behind getting into the modes and how all that works, okay? So, general mode rules. Okay. So it doesn't matter which house you pick, except for Greyjoy. Because it spots you the Greyjoy house immediately, but we'll talk about that when we're talking about playing as Greyjoy. But any house you pick, I pick Stark. You'll notice two things. I pick Stark. The Stark emblem is the white one in the center. That's flashing. If you ever see a uh, flashing house insignia, that means that house battle or that mode is able to be played. It might not be able to be started, but it's able to be played. When you To know that you have a mode ready to start or play, the center ramp. That white light that's below the lock shot, so the lock's in the middle, that's not lit. The flashing white light says choose your battle. That's your modes. If that's flashing, when you hit that shot, you'll be able to choose from one or possibly two modes at once of anything that's flashing in the middle here. Okay. So I only have Stark mode flashing. So if I hit the center ramp, the game is only going to allow me to choose the Stark mode. 
So see, that's the only house I got to play. Now I'm going to pass on this for right now because one of the strategies of the game is to wait because these modes are pretty valuable. One of the strategies of the game is to save starting modes until you've locked your third ball for multi-ball, start two modes, then you're getting three for one. You're killing two modes at the same time, excuse me, and getting all your jackpots for multi-ball. So that's a big strategy on this game. So now what you'll notice is, since I passed on that mode, I can't just hit the center ramp and start that mode again. You can see that my choose my battle or start my mode is no longer flashing. That means I cannot play a mode right now. Watch, if I lock a ball or hit that center ramp, if there's no lock, whatever. Got my ball locked, it's gonna serve me a new one. But if you notice, it did not let me choose a mode. So if some of you have been playing in tournaments or otherwise and have wondered, wait, I just hit the center ramp, I got modes ready, why is it not letting me play a mode? It's because you passed on a mode, it unlit the center ramp, now you have to re-qualify that center ramp. And that's what I'm going to explain now. Every house on this game has an insignia in the center. Starting at the top, the blue, you have Targaryen. Then Stark is white. Baratheon, yellow. Lannister, red. Greyjoy, purple. Tyrell, green. And Martell, orange. You'll also notice, every major shot in this game also has those colors. If you look at the drop targets, the shield in front of that is lit yellow. Those are the Baratheon targets. The left orbit, it's kind of hard to tell on stream, but that's purple. That is Greyjoy. That belongs to the Greyjoy house. That's the Greyjoy shot. The dragon is blue. That is the Targaryen shot. Center ramp, that is red. That's the Lannister shot. The right ramp right now is a, per is a bluish color, meaning it's been iced over, meaning we've already lit that house. We already have qualified Stark, so that house is out of the equation right now. We'll go into what the iced over shot means later, but right now we've already qualified Stark, so that's why that that ramp is colored this like ice blue color. And then the next shot, the right orbit is your Martell. That's orange. Just like the insignia down here. Orange, orange. The lock targets. Your shield is green there. That's for Tyrell. Now, since we passed on a mode, the only way we can start a mode now is to hit any of these house's shots three times. So let's say we want to play the Lannister mode. I'm not sure if I've hit that once already. Let's see. You, this is another thing you can use your instant info for. House Greyjoy. i got to hit three more to light. Lannister. I've already hit it twice. It says one more to light that mode. So if I hit the center ramp right now, it will qualify my Lannister mode, relight the choose your battle mode, and also let me start it. So if I hit the center ramp and I only need one more shot, it's gonna give me that one more shot and also let me start the move. So let's try it here. Oh no. Okay, so see, it iced over, the red went away, Lannister was flashing in the middle if you saw, and it's letting me start a move. Now, I can choose Stark because I had that lit before, Lannister, or I can choose them both, or pass again, okay? I'm going to pass again. Now, if you look, because I passed, my center ramp shot mode light is out again. So that means I have to re I have to hit another house's shot to get that lit up again. So again, any house... So, like, so the, uh, the houses that are on major shots. So, um... Greyjoy in the left orbit. Targaryen the dragon. Right Orbit Martell, and we already did the right ramp and the center ramp for Lannister and Stark. Hit those three times. For the target houses, Baratheon is the drop targets, so let's go through here. Uh, House Stark. Oh, that's the one we did. Okay, so Baratheon, three more to light. That means I have to hit, the, I don't have, I don't have to just hit the three drop targets, I have to complete the three drop target sets three times. Okay? Then the Baratheon House of Light. Same with Tyrell. You can see I've hit one of the targets for Tyrell. One's lit. i got to hit the other one to do for that to count as one completion. Okay? I have to do that three times in order to light the Tyrell House. The other ones, you just need to hit that shot three times. A key thing to remember. You can only...
qualify and advance towards lighting these houses during single ball play. This is what we're in right now, is single ball play. If you are in a mode, if you are in a multi-ball, if you're in anything but this state, you cannot advance towards the modes. I don't care how many times you hit the targets on the right or the drop targets on the left, or if you hit the center ramp 45 times in a row, that is not going to advance you towards those house modes, okay? Um, now, I just completed the green targets, and I might have hit one other shot. Those are advancing me. So if you look at Tyrell's progress, so Tyrell, two more to light, because I completed those once, two more to light. Let's go after some other houses. So that's one shot for Greyjoy. For shots like Greyjoy and Martell, uh, Stark and Lannister, there's a different animation for each time you hit it. So you can remember those animations. So now the animation for the second time I hit Greyjoy is different. So that's how you can keep counting your head. And then obviously you'll know that that mode's ready if that mode's flashing down here. So now Greyjoy's flashing down here. And now our mode select's flashing again. Okay? So hitting it up there, it'll let me select a mode again, stack two modes, or pass on it. Yeah, I'm going to pass again. Okay? One downfall to passing on a mode is, again, you can't just hit back up the center and start a mode if you want. you got to requalify one. So if you have only the Baratheon targets left to light a mode, you might be putting yourself in a pretty crappy situation because I can't start a mode until I hit all these dangerous drop targets down in single ball play to light my modes. But if you've ever gotten to the point where you've lit every house, every house is flashing, available to play a mode, that's when the center ramp will always be lit to start a mode. So, if you find yourself pretty close to lighting all the houses, go ahead and get them all flashing because then every time you hit the center ramp, you're going to be able to play those modes. The other thing is, though, at that point, you can't pass on modes, okay? So, if you're going after Winter is Coming or Winter is Come Multi Ball, sorry about your luck. You're going to have to wait till the modes time out um, to get back out of there. But anyway, it's getting a little complicated. But anyway, so we have Tyrell, Martell, Baratheon, and Targaryen still to go. Let's see if we can light them all up. Ooh, baby! One, one good tidbit to know about the Targaryen shot. You obviously... So, play field validation. I don't know how many targets I hit, but I hit a couple. Gave it back to me. Always short plunge. That's one of those moments where I thought my ball was over, but it wasn't because of play field validation. Thanks for the bits. Mr. Apple, Acre Apple. Okay, one one cool thing to know about the dragon shot. If you have your mystery lit, that's the uh, insert closest to you at the dragon kickback right here. You light the mystery by collecting gold. That's these dangerous gold stand-ups. Don't purposely go for those unless you're a multi-ball. But anyway, if that mystery is lit and you hit the Targaryen shot, it will give you credit for two shots towards Targaryen house. So that's a good time to go after the Targaryen shot if you're trying to light that house's mode is when that mystery shot's lit, because it's going to give you two for one, because that shot's pretty dangerous. Is lit. Okay, so I hit Targaryen three times. That's lit. So this is my third lock, so now I'm in multi-ball. Again, we'll talk strategy later, but people always like to uh, stack two houses together. You're getting, uh, you're getting triple your money, okay? But, again, we'll go into that strategy later. But we're just going to keep this game going to, so I can show you, once you get all the houses lit, um, you'll be able to uh, just keep playing the mode over and over again if you want. So as you can tell, I hit the Tyrell shots twice now. So I should have Tyrell lit after this multi ball's over, right? Because I, I hit him once before, and when I was in multi ball, I know I hit him two more times. So uh, we're still in this mode here, but. But once we get out of the mode, you'll see what I'm talking about with. 
the rules to advance the nodes. So we're back out of the mode. You can notice, we know we hit the Tyrell targets enough to light that mode, but it's not lit because it doesn't count unless we're in this state of the game, single ball play. So remember that. Try and get the Tyrell targets again. Nope. Not going to cut it. I was hoping, sometimes in the Mystery Awards, it'll let you light a house. So I was kind of hoping for that, but we didn't get it. Okay, there's another one for Tyrell. We should only need one more there. Yep. Um, so someone asked about the Penn Stadium lights when left in the play field. I have forgotten to take them off my game at least 40 million times. Uh, they're very robust. I've banged the game up against them and they're totally fine. But I obviously don't recommend doing that. So get into a habit of taking them off the magnets and laying them in the play field before you lift them. Before you lift the play field. Uh, but again, they're very solidly built. I have forgotten to take them off tons of times. I only have one set so I move them from game to game. So I'm constantly moving them. And they're, they're very sturdily built, but again, you don't want to be doing that every time because eventually you're going to do some damage if you, not, if you hit them. So. Alright, so we're going to try and get the rest of the modes lit so you can see the... Uh... Now you'll see, I didn't have... Uh, I can't remember if coming out of a multi-ball your modes will be lit again, but they might be. Also at the beginning of each ball, the modes will be lit up the middle. Those are two other ways to get them lit without qualifying another house. So remember, the music changed, now my play field's validated and my ball saves going. Okay, so I got my Tyrell lit for the three shots. Now I just need Martell. And Baratheon. I'm not going to get credit for that Martell shot because I'm in winner's coming mode. Remember, it doesn't count unless you're in single ball play, not having any other modes running. So that Martell shot counted. That one counted too. Again, there's different animations. For each time you hit it, you can use those as indicators or just keep counting your head, do whatever you need to do. But So there's Baratheon. So one more shot to Martell and all modes will be lit. Okay, so the whole shebang's lit up. So now this is the only way to be able to keep continually hitting the center ramp and get back into modes. Now you'll also notice I can't pass. Normally one hit to the left flipper will choose pass for now. You'll notice I have to choose something. I gotta choose some combination of one or two modes. I can't choose to pass anymore. So that means when you come out of the mode, you're going to be able to go right back up the center ramp and start another mode. Okay, so I'm out of the modes. Typically, if I didn't have all the modes lit, I would not be able to start a mode at the center ramp. But I have all the modes lit, so I can go right back into the modes if I want to. So that's something to watch out for. If you can see that you're close to lighting all the modes, that's something beneficial. I mean, I know the game's going to force you to play modes, 
but at the same time, the modes are valuable. So if you're not in multi-ball, it's okay to play modes. That's usually what I do because I know the mode rules so well that I can get some big paydays from playing modes only. So usually some of those paydays are higher than what I get in a multi-ball. I know that seems crazy because I'm sure some of you have gotten a billion points out of a Blackwater multi-ball. Like, what the shit? Like, how can you possibly get close to that? Well, with multipliers and playing the modes at the right time, I've gotten... I've gotten almost a billion points from one mode, okay? So, again, you can't get to that point with the modes as easily as you can a multi-ball. And obviously you only have one ball in play instead of multiple, but again, it, it just pays to know more than a few things about this game, okay? So that's essentially all I had in related to general mode rules. The next uh, installment in this walkthrough, the entire time is going to be spent on every house battle. So we're going to go through Baratheon, like this mode right here, how this mode works with the rules and what it's worth and when you should go for what or that. Um, so that's going to be what we talk about next week. We're going to go after every single house battle in the game and talk at length how each of those modes work and what the rules are, including... If you choose Greyjoy House, because that, one of the caveats to choosing Greyjoy at the beginning of the game, it makes the modes harder. Because if you beat the modes, you get that house's power. We'll go into that as well in a later one. But next time, next week, we're going to talk about all the modes and how those work specifically. Um, so, uh, hang out for a couple more minutes here. Uh, chat, fire away. Any questions you had from tonight, just have at it. I'm going to play house around with the spinner so we can get that lit up. But uh, give me some uh, questions if you guys had anything on anything we talked about tonight specifically. Again, if you have more questions about other parts of the game, save them. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to uh, the further reaches of the game. But for tonight, um, if you've got any questions on the five things I got posted here, please fire away. Unbiased, unbent, unbroken. One thing I like to do to get the, or that will just kind of happen naturally to qualify that Greyjoy mode, sometimes you won't hit it far enough up the orbit for it to go all the way around. If it stays up there long enough and comes back down, you'll get a, a credit for two shots on Greyjoy instead of one. So that's kind of cool. Oh boy. Yeah, so thanks everybody for tuning in. Again, I'll uh, I'll play one more game as Martel to see if we can get the spinner going. And then we'll call it. But again, thanks for watching. I think that was pretty successful. Hopefully the format worked for everybody. Uh, if I missed some questions, um, I'll try and go back and and check the stream for questions that I had unanswered but um, and cover those on the next session but yeah um, hopefully this will really help people again I'm like these I'll save these as highlights on the straight down the middle channel on twitch but then I will also upload these to well we'll, we'll probably put them on the straight down the middle uh, pinball channel but I'll also upload them to my Chuck Ward channel on uh, YouTube as well, so they'll always be out there for people to access these these walkthroughs should they need to go back. Because I mean, it's a lot to take in, but hopefully these digestible segments and being able to go through and only talk about certain aspects of the game will help people. Because this is a fantastic game, and I feel like a lot of people get discouraged about the complexity, but hopefully my tutorials here will help. And I apologize too for. This not being a premium and being able to cover those additional rules, but um, you're, you're going to get the gist. Uh, you're you're going to be good on both versions, knowing what I'm teaching you with the pro.
Lock two. Lock two. Okay. Locked. Oh boy. Ah, oh, why I do that? Oh, that was bad. No, nope, don't kill me. Hey, Birdo, thanks for tuning in, man. Yeah, like, like I said, um, it's great that people came and, and helped uh, ask questions so I could get everything cleared up for everybody. But at the same time, it's going to be saved out there forever. You know, just be like any other tutorials that are out there. It'll be out there forever, so. Let's get some drops. Let's get some drops. Oh, that was not good. Hey. With that spinner values out here. Oh, I let it drain. Damn it. Nice. Glad to help, Chad. You're too good a player not to be an expert at this game, so hopefully it helps you too. Thanks for everybody that gave us the bits. I'm not entirely sure how those work. I know it's a small uh, monetary donation, and I really appreciate you guys doing that because uh, Greg and Zach work really hard on their YouTube channel. I'm just a guy that likes to stream and is friends with Greg and Zach, so I really appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting their, their channel because they'll get to continue to do awesome stuff for us even though I know they do it. For the pure love of it anyway so thanks again Let's see if we can't get some multiplied mode shots going here as you guys can see I got 2x play field going and got some uh, combo multipliers going too so see they're, they're lit everywhere but the center shot so I want to hit everything but the center shot Let's see if we can't get some stuff going here So as long as you're hitting the, the red shots, the red flashing arrows, stuff's going to stay valuable. Now I really want to hit the center shot to lock a ball and freeze my timers. Because remember, while the play field's not validated, man, I lost them. But I still got 2x. That's about to go out, so I want to trap up. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Hey, Evan, you just came, uh, you came just in time to see... The end of it. So, uh, Evan, make sure you tune in for the other ones because I could use uh, another expert's opinion on certain aspects of, of this game that I might not be completely clear on. Once we get into the deeper, more complicated stuff, I'll need 
Need your guys' help on that. <clears throat> okay, so thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Evan, I don't, uh, let me see what your, your Greyjoy score is here. Yeah, that's lame, dude. I'll, I'll beat that tonight, maybe, after the stream. But, uh, okay, yeah, uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. That was tons of fun. I think it went, went well. Um, shout out to uh, Chad Hobbs, Mr. Uh, Misray on here, or Ace Pinball, sorry. Um, he made this awesome overlay. Uh, thanks for Greg helping me get the bits set up. So uh, we'll keep that going. But awesome. Hopefully everybody liked it. We'll uh, we'll see you next week, and we'll talk about all the house battles in detail for every house, how to beat them, all that good stuff. So thanks for watching, everybody. Peace. <laughs>